And we're going to do something really fun. I just discovered how to do this. I discovered it on Photoshop, but hey, it can be done on a piece of free software that we've used a lot here as well. And turns out incredible images. What we're going to be doing is a double image or a double exposure type of shot where we can play around with different graphics in the background and different modes and come up with some really incredible images. And the great part about this is it takes only a handful of clicks to do. You don't have to be fancy or super artistic. You don't have to do masking or or selecting or any of that stuff. You It is as simple as selecting two photographs and clicking on uh, on a operator on the screen. So let's get started. We're going to go to pixlr.com slash eleva ele elevator slash edu... Now I want to do educator. Pixlr.com slash editor. Okay? And that's P-I-X-L-R dot com editor. And that will bring you up this screen that we see in front of you today and you go down to open image from computer. And... I'm going to open an image here. Uh, I'm going to start with an image of two hands. And I'm going to put that on the screen. Uh, that is actually going to be my top image. But I found that, interestingly enough, it works better to put the top image down first and then size the the background image to the top image. Now I'm not going to want to have this as background and I'm certainly not going to want to have it locked. So I have a little lock on this in the layers panel here and that's what this is called layers. You see there's a little image and it says background. I'm going to do, double click that lock and it turns into a check mark. That way I can move that layer around if I want to. It's not locked into uh, that background. Now I'm going to go and open another picture. Now the first picture I would have opened, I might have opened from the file menu, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to open it from the layers menu. If I open it from the file menu, then it creates a new project. I don't want to do that. So I go to layer and then click on open image as layer. And I've got this really nice kind of you know, surreal uh, image of stars and sort of a it's sort of a, a prism prism effect. Uh, so let's see what that looks like when I lay it down here. And it's taking a while to Okay, let's see if I can get it again. There it goes. And now it's come out it's a little small. I don't want it that small and so I'm going to go over to edit and then I go down to free transform that's free transform I just look for the word transform and that gives you all these little boxes now a lot of you've seen these before but those are boxes that you use to adjust the size of your photo you simply put your cursor over it and in the case of Pixlr, hold down the shift key and the left mouse key and then just drag until it totally covers. In fact, I like to cover it just a little bit more. Yeah, I like to cover it so that it is has room on all sides. You see room up here, room over here. Okay, and now to lock that in, um, your best bet is to go over here and click on the little arrow next to the plus sign. And it says, do you want to apply the changes? You click yes. And now, hold on, what happened to my hands? My first layer that disappeared. Layers are like a stack. You put one on top of the other. They will only show through when you do something else to them. The other layers right down there, see if I click on... Uh, on it, I can, uh, it's right under there. So if I go up here and I hide this layer, there it is. 
So if I don't want to hide it, so I'll put it back in there. But what I do want to do is I want to move it behind the hands. So what I'll do is I highlight that, and you can tell it's highlighted because it turns blue. Then I just hold down my left mouse button and drag it down. See, now the hands are on top. The uh, stars and, and colors are on the bottom. Now, this is a really neat uh, setup, so now I'm going to start playing with it. Now, if you notice, there's this little box here. It has two lines on it, and each line has a dot on it, kind of like it, they're sliders on a control panel. And you s click on it, and that toggles your layer setting. And we want to have, we want to make these adjustments to the top layer. So I highlight the top layer. I have to do that. And then down here, it says mode. And that means blending mode. And what we're going to do is blend these two pictures together, but do it in some artistic, fun ways. First is normal. That means basically no blending. Now, uh, you can use add, and uh, that's where basically they fade out both of the uh, both of the images and put them together. Now that's really a nice image if you look at it. Uh, that's very bright, very light. Uh, if you were doing something where you wanted to give the idea of hands across the galaxy or something, that might work. Um, I think it's a little light for my uh, for my uh, taste. But now let's see what some other things can do. If you go to darken. Look what happens. The hands pick up the the image, but all the rest stays dark. What happens? Well, basically what this does is any place where the image behind is darker than the image on top, that shows through. But if it's not darker, then it doesn't. So if you notice, black is darker than anything, so it's just going to wipe out everything. But it, here, you've got these hands... And they're picking up the colors. Not bad. I'd have an interesting effect if you wanted to uh, just show those hands as being different colors. Uh, you can use hard light, and it brightens it up a little bit. And uh, basically speaking, it does the same as darken, but it, then it highlights the lighter areas uh, here. There's another one called um, we're going go down here if I can get there yeah and that's lighten now lighten gives us this I don't really care about charge you just have sort of the ghosting image of the hands in back I, I really don't like that one at all uh, you do multiply and multiply is kind of like the others where it like darken, except it comes out a little darker than I would really like for this. Overlay gives me an interesting effect. And see, overlay gives me that uh, uh, the effect of having the, the stars and the colors really bright with the hands in the background. Kind of a neat uh, effect. Uh, we also have screen. Uh, it, pretty much similar to overlay, except uh, kind of looks like you're viewing it through a screen. And then we have subtract, and look at what we get with subtract. Subtract pulls out images, it pulls out the colors and replaces them with colors from behind, giving a really, really um, interesting look. Now, another one that does that is one called Difference, and that's a little further up here. Uh, and let me just slide this up. Difference does pretty much the same thing. You see, it's like that, but I basically like uh, Subtract better. Let's see. Uh, I like subtract better. So let's go back to subtract here. 
and oh that's a beautiful anyway so 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 great that would be great for a cover of a science fiction book or or even a a meme you might put a scripture verse on that about how god reaches out to man it's it's such a really great image now one of the things i would like to do though is you notice there's all this negative space over here the hand just sort of comes out of darkness but this one here keeps going way over there i would like to make this a little more of a square image so i'm going to click on the cropping tool and that's the one right here at the top on the left you can tell because it has like a, a little box like with uh, the edges out and you get an, a plus sign and you can just drag that over the image and then you adjust it to where you want to to cut and it leaves open these boxes and so you can start moving it again I'm going to move it in right about there. I'm going to move this one over just a little bit over to the other side of the wrist. Maybe move it up just, maybe move it up just a touch. Yeah. I'm going to try and make it kind of square. That way, if I want to post to Instagram, it'll be in the square format that Instagram likes. Okay. That looks pretty good, so I go over and I click the crop tool again. Do you want to apply the changes? Yes, I do. And there I've got my image in a nice square looking great. Uh, and, you know, you could send this off to one of those places and put it on a, a placemat or a, uh, a trivet or hot pad or something. I, uh, not that I'm going to do that, but I'm going to save this. Click on Control C S. I'm going to give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call it Hands Across the Stars One. I think I got one in here called Hands Across the Stars already. And I'm going to move the quality up. It defaults to 80, but this is such a nice picture. I'm going to move it up to 90, right up to here. And then. I just click OK, and it says Hands Across the Stars, J1, JPEG, so I'm going to click Save, and my image is saved, ready to go. Now, wasn't that interesting? Wasn't that uh, simple? So, very simple to do. Stack one image on top of the other. Click on the Toggle Layer Settings button and to choose one of the modes that you like best and it will blend those two together in a type of of double exposure uh, imagery that used to only be able to be done in a dark room so until next time i'm terry main this has been connections tv and i'll be catching you on the flip side